Um, this is January's Kids Craft Hour. We are going to make these Romero Brito uh, Neo Pop Cats. So first, if you want to go into the um, discussion area of the event, you will find some supplemental resources for this art lesson. There is um, information about pop art, what it is, the different types of pop art, um, some vocabulary terms that you might want to learn. Um, there's also information about Romero Brito. He is a Brazilian neo-pop artist and this is his um, artwork that we're going to be recreating tonight. So go learn about him. Very cool artist. He's all about happy art. So everything's bright colors, um, bold lines, a lot of pattern play. So we'll be touching on those topics tonight. And also there's a materials list so you'll know what you need for tonight's lesson. But there's not a lot of stuff tonight. So I will go over it now. Um, first you're going to need a pencil. And an eraser, you're welcome to use one on your pencil. I always like to keep a secondary eraser just so I don't use up the one on my pencil. You're going to need markers. Um, if you are, um, if you're working with your younger littles on this project and you don't want to use markers, um, I, oh hi, Mika, how are you? Thank you for jumping on. Um, and thank you, thank you. Um, if you don't use markers with your littles, you are welcome to use colored pencils, you can use crayons. Um, don't feel like you have to use markers. It's just what will give you the boldest and brightest colors, but um, you're more than welcome to use crayons or colored pencils. Um, I know it can be tricky with kids to use a marker. Stay on the paper. <laughs> Um, I am going to be using marker paper. Excuse my cover. I had a exacto knife project, so it kind of <laughs> trashed. But um, I'm going to be using marker paper. You are welcome to use any kind of white paper you want. I just prefer to use marker paper with my markers because it keeps it from bleeding through. You can see how nice it looks on the back of the page. And then the colors are very bright and bold and colorful on the actual page. Um, so I prefer to use marker paper, but like I said, you're welcome to use any white paper you want. As long as your colors show up, you're good to go. Okay. Um, in addition, if you want a visual guide, um, on this project in it, you know, besides me teaching it to you, obviously, but if you would like, um, a step-by-step -step guide, I put one on the discussion page inside the event for you. There's step-by-step -step instructions. And then at the bottom of the page, you'll see a little snippet about Romero Brito. So it's a little bit more, um, that's the actual handout I use in my art lessons with um, kids for this, this particular lesson. So um, that way they, they understand a little bit about the artist before we jump into the lesson. And if you know they finish before another student, they have time to read over that and look at the little art um, images that are included on there. So if you want, no pressure. If not, just me and we are going to jump into it. Um, it's actually a pretty easy lesson. Um, it probably won't take the full hour. Sometimes I go over just a little bit. Um, sometimes uh, projects don't take up quite the hour, but I'm hoping we'll be just perfect with this one tonight. Um, okay, so first things first. If you want to use a ruler, I put it as an optional uh, material because I can show you ways where you don't necessarily have to use it, but um, I did just because I didn't want to have fold lines on my paper, and I will show you why I say that right now. So, if you don't have a ruler, I'm going to use a piece of paper from my sketchbook to show you what you can do. So you are going to take your paper and you're going to Sorry, saw it got a little out of focus there. You're going to fold once this way, and you're going to make a crease. It doesn't matter if you do it forwards or backwards, you just want to half your paper. Okay, so let me make this crease. And then open it. Forward, 
or you fold it backwards. You just want to fold it into four equal parts, okay? So I am going to fold mine again. And when you open it up, you should have four rectangles. And those are going to help you draw your cat. It will serve as a guide for you to lay out your cat on here, okay? So I'm going to use this paper um, to show you how to draw it. Get my pencil. First thing we're going to do is we've already got our, our rectangles, okay? So we are going to start with the head of the cat. And he's going to go in this bottom, it will be the bottom left rectangle, okay? So if you're looking at your page, it's the bottom left, okay? So what you're going to do first, and you all know how silly this looks when Mr. Miss Crystal draws this this way, but that's okay, right? We're going to get through this doesn't always come out quite perfectly. <laughs> I'm going to hold this one here so you can see. I will tell you um, in March I will be back in New York in my new studio and um, my videos are going to be a lot better, a lot easier to follow along with. Oh hey, oh it's your birthday, happy birthday, thanks for jumping on, that's awesome. I'm glad you're celebrating with me and us. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with the cat. You are going to use the bottom left rectangle like I mentioned. Okay, so you see the cat is about a third of the way down on this side. And then this side is a little bit higher, okay? So it does not have to be exactly a third. I just want to say that. Um, if you have been in my classes before, if you join me virtually, you know that I am all about making mistakes and learning from them. So if it is not one third down, that is completely fine. I don't even consider that a mistake because uh, not all kids have um, uh, experience with proportion and uh, things like that. So remember, we're learning. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time you do it. That's how we know what to do better and improve upon the next time, okay? All right, so about a third of the way down, I'm just gonna make a little mark, okay? Because I know that's gonna be my point for this side. And then we're gonna go over here and it's about halfway of that third, okay? So if this is the whole third, we're gonna go up just a little bit and that's going to be the point. And, and notice it's not all the way to the edge of the page, okay? So you want to leave a little bit of space. And you can see I actually did less space this time than I did this time, okay? There we go, okay, sorry. <laughs> so in between those two points, okay, what is this? This is a triangle, right? So you don't have to do this. I just want to show you. If I go here, that's a line, okay? And then if I have my center point down here for the chin, that's gonna be a rectangle when I connect those dots, okay? So don't worry about this line. I just wanna show you that it's a rectangle so you can understand easily how they're gonna connect, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna draw the ears. These are rectangles also, right? We know how to make rectangles. So let's see. We've got our crease here. We've got our point here for the side. We're going to go about half, or no, we'll see. Yeah, about halfway up our rectangle. So now we're working in the top left rectangle, okay? So we've got an ear, and we're going to connect our dot to this dot. We're going to come down to form the rectangle. So we got two dots, connect those. Straight line. Okay. Then we're going to draw 
Our other ear, which is another rectangle. So let's see, we're gonna draw a point. So we connect those, and then we're gonna connect this dot and this dot, and that will connect to make your cat head. Okay, not too hard, right? Let's see if, okay, there we go. I turned the light on a little brighter, so that, oh, all right, that's awesome. Okay, now you can see the pencil much better. I have a new camera, and so I'm still kind of learning um, what's work, what's going to work best. Okay, so now let's go ahead. We can go ahead and do our, um, actually, let's wait. We're going to save that for later. Okay, now we're going to do our two feet, okay? So you'll notice the chin is in the middle of this foot, right? So we can use our chin as a guide and we're going to do, it's going to be kind of like a U shape for both feet, okay? So when they're combined, it's kind of like a W, but we're going to do one at a time. So let's break it up. I'm going to do this side first because I know that my chin for my cat is in the middle of that foot, okay? So that gives me a guideline, okay? So we got one foot. Let's draw the other one right beside it. Oh, it's so hard to draw like this. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to have my easel. <laughs> okay. So now you should have a head and two feet. Okay. Next, we're going to draw this part. Okay. So we're going to draw the body. The body is going to start in the top left rectangle on your page, okay? And it is going to touch all four rectangles because it's starting at the top left, it's arcing over into the top right, coming down into the bottom right, and ending over here in the bottom left, okay? So when you draw this shape, think about a rainbow. Okay, so you're going to draw like a one line rainbow. All right. Um, when you look at this, you see the line starts right here at the corner of the ear. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to curve it all the way around like a rainbow and stop here and draw a line connecting to my feet. Okay. So we're going to start here in the corner of the ear, going to arc it all the way up, going through all the rectangles, and then we're going to connect it to the feet. Okay? So that's your cat body. That wasn't hard, right? That was pretty easy. Okay? So now we're going to do the same type of shapes to get these lines. Okay, so we've got one, two, three lines. These are gonna go to the side, left to right, left to right, and this is gonna go top to bottom, okay? They're starting at the cheek, and they're going to meet the side of the body, okay? So watch me, and then I want you to do them. Okay, so we're gonna start at the cheek, and we're gonna go in to the top right rectangle and we're gonna end at the body. We're gonna do the same thing for this one and it is gonna end in the bottom right corner, okay? So you're staying within the bottom rectangle for this one. And then remember this one, this one's gonna go top to bottom, okay? So that's your lines for your body. Okay, now all we have left for the cat is to draw the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Okay, so let me erase this a little bit more so it does not confuse you. Okay. Now we're going to start with this eye. And you can see the center of 
the side of the face, the point of the face right there, is about center with the eye, okay? So this is like a half football shape, right? So remember I showed you last, no, actually it was the month before. In November I showed you this was like a football shape, right? Just one arc over and one under, one over, one under, okay? So we're going to do half of that. So it's going to look, some, uh, it's about two-thirds, about two-thirds. So we're going to do something like that, okay? So this is going to be the center of my eye. We're going to go over, then we're coming under, okay? And we are going to do the same thing for this side, okay? But you notice the corner is not quite in the center here, okay? So it's a little bit lower. So we're going to go over, under, okay? Then we're going to draw a curve that looks like the letter C, another curve that looks like the letter C, a circle, a circle, a triangle in between for the nose. Then we're going to do the letter J. Then we're going to do a backwards J. Okay? So that's something what it should look like. Like I said, it's hard to draw from this angle, but that should be the gist of it. Okay, so once you have your cat drawn, then we're going to draw this line, this line, this line, and this line. Okay? So this one, you'll have your crease about here if you creased. So you're going to draw it just to the left side of that. And then down here, it's going to be the same thing, but it's going to be just to the right side of your crease. So your crease should be about the, here down the center of your page. Okay? So this line's going to the right. This line is going to the left. Okay? So let's draw those. So here's my crease. I'm going to go over to the left just a little bit and draw a straight line down from my cat going to the top of my page and off of my page, okay? Just erase this so you can see it better. Okay. And then down here, I have my crease. I'm going over to the right just a little bit, and I'm drawing a straight line down from the bottom of my cat off the page, okay? Now, these are a lot easier because we get to follow the lines that we put on the page, okay? So we're going to go right on the crease, and we're going to go from our cat to the edge of the page, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side, from our cat to the edge of the page. Okay, now the fun part. <laughs> now we get to color. So, just a few tips. We're going to fill in our color part first, okay, and our patterns. And do you notice a theme with all these patterns? The lighter color is on the bottom in every single one, okay? And the reason for that is that if you do the darker color on the bottom, your shapes that you draw, your patterns that you draw are not going to show up, okay? So we want to make sure if you're doing a light a green square, make sure the light green is on the bottom and the dark green is on the top. If you're doing um, yellow or yellow orange, make sure that you do a darker color on top. I chose red. You could also do yellow with orange dots. Um, this is yellow, orange with red stripes, uh, pink on the bottom with red stripes, um, violet with blue violet, dashes and dots, and then I did light green with dark green stripes, okay? So I'm going to use these same colors this time um, to show you, I'm going to show you an example of the dark on bottom and the light on top, so you'll see why you don't want to do that. In the meantime, I want you to start filling in 
your colors, any color you want, just make sure you have a lighter color that you're filling in on bottom, okay? Don't worry about um, tracing your black lines yet. We'll do that last. It'll, it makes it a really nice clean finish when you're done with your drawing. Um, and it will cover up your pencil lines. So if you got, a, if your line's a little wavy, maybe your hand was a little shaky, don't worry about it because the black marker is gonna cover it up. You're not even gonna see it. Don't stress about it, okay? So I am going to show you two examples, one with a light color on bottom and the dark color on top. And then I'm going to show you another example of the dark color on bottom with the light color on top, which you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> so I've got a yellow marker. I'll just do this section right here so you can see it easily. I'm going to do it kind of fast so you can see um, the difference before you start filling in your patterns. But you're just going to fill in each section with a color like this, okay? And remember, um, like I said, if you are not using markers, that is totally fine. You can use colored pencils, you can use crayons, you can even use paint if you really wanted to and you're comfortable with that medium. Um, oil pastels would work, um, you could even use soft pastels if you wanted, okay? So I've got my light color down. I'm going to fill one in with a darker color. I'm going to use pink. I'm going to use, yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to fill this one in. And you can see, like, it's not necessarily a dark color. It's just darker than the yellow, okay? So that's all I'm saying is whatever color you use on the bottom should be the lighter of the two colors that you're using for your shades. And you can see the difference. Um, this is just paper from my sketchbook instead of the marker paper. And you can see you get all these lines, you get spots where the um, Paper doesn't soak up the ink as well, and so that's why I really like to use marker paper with uh, markers because it shows the color so much better than if you used sketchbook paper. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to draw some dots on top of here just so you can get an idea of what the uh, darker color on top of the lighter color looks like. And then, whoops. <laughs> and then I'm going to do the same on, on the pink. I'm going to use the lighter color. And then you'll see exactly why we do not want to do that. Now, I'm not saying you can't experiment with this. If you want to experiment, that's totally fine. I'm just telling you in pop art, the colors are very bold and colorful and bright. And you can see this is not as contrasting and bright as the pink dots on top of the yellow. Okay, so just know the difference. If you do it on purpose, that's totally fine. Um, but just know it is going to look a lot different than this by the time you are done. Okay? All right, so the colors I use are pretty simple. I use two shades of green, two shades of violet, two shades of yellow, um, two shades of red and a blue. I just did one square of blue just to stand out. Um, and it really, so I'll tell you a little bit of why I use the colors I use. So uh, red and green are complementary colors. Um, purple and yellow are complementary colors. And blue and orange are com complementary colors. I used a yellow orange instead of a true orange um, just to keep it from being too contrasty. Okay, all right, so if you have been filling in your shapes, that is awesome. If you have not, just keep going, that's totally fine. I am going to start filling in um, the shapes I have and show you how to continue. 
I'm going to stop, start in the top left, and I'm just outlining my cat. I'm going around it, filling in that box. And if you, like I said, if you cross over just a little bit, it's totally okay. The black marker is going to cover it up. Okay, so just fill it in. I'm just coloring over my <laughs> example drawing from earlier, but that's okay. I don't want to waste time erasing that. So if you haven't looked at uh, my events tab, I have Kids Craft Hours planned for just about the whole year. I've got three more projects. a month I might bump it up to two um, depending on the project and my schedule you know if I have artwork commissions or something um, I'm going to draw lines over this just like I did here just so you can start seeing how this is going to come together um, so I might be hosting two of these a month uh, once I get moved up to New York uh, from Texas which will be in a couple weeks So if the cat ear gets in the way and you're doing lines, that's okay. Just break it up. Get it as close as possible. See, my lines are a little wonky because I'm drawing them from this angle. But also, nobody's perfect, guys. <laughs> okay. So now, let's see. I've got a light violet and a violet. Okay. I was wrong about those colors, but that's okay. So I'm going to continue over here. And on that one, I used uh, light violet on the base, and I used regular violet to do the dashes and circles, or dots rather. Okay. So I'm just going around the curve of the cat's body, and I am stopping when I get to the line that I drew going off the page and that forms my top section. If you like this project, um, there are other Romero Brito projects if you really like his art and the style. Um, if anybody's interested in other ones, let me know. I know that um, there's a heart project floating around of his on the internet. Um, I'm more than happy to share those with you so you can learn more about his art and style. Pop art is just, it's like when you think of happy art, Pop art should pop in your head. <laughs> pop in your head, sorry. Um, it's the colors, the uh, subjects. I mean, they're usually a play on uh, what's going on in society. Uh, Andy Warhol is a huge, um, very well-known pop artist. I'm sure many of you have heard his name. Um, Campbell Soup. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm taking the darker color of the violet, and I'm just going to do little dashes, and then I'll do some dots in between the dashes. We're good on time. We got about 30 minutes left, so you should have plenty of time. Don't feel like you're rushed. I'm trying to go a little faster than you should be going because I want to be ahead of you to be able to show you the next step. So don't feel like you have to keep up with me. Um, and of course, if you are taking your time, as you should be with art, because you want 
to learn how to draw straight lines, how to focus on patterns. Um, the patterns that we're doing today are very, very simple patterns. Um, dots, lines, uh, you know, stripes. It's easy stuff. Uh, but you're welcome to use more complex shapes if you want. Just remember not to get too complex or you kind of lose the pop art feel of it, right? So um, I'm going to draw... This is the space where I showed you the yellow over the pink, but actually have it with red stripes over pink. So I'm going to draw some red stripes over that um, and fill that one in since I've already got the base color done. Um, and I'm using Prismacolor markers. You don't really need markers as fancy, obviously. I've had these pretty much since college. I think I bought some new ones at some point, but I've just had them forever, but Crayola markers are totally fine. Um, I really like the brand Arteza. I've been using their products a lot. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just am new to their products and have been uh, pleasantly surprised by them. So just sharing that. Um, I'm on their email list and they usually have some really good sales going on. Um, and uh, they have products suitable for kids and people that are more professional artists. So they're not expensive, which is awesome. Um, okay, so moving on, I'm going to do this little shape before I jump into the body, just because I already, same thing, I already did those. So I've got the, oh wait, we don't want the, I don't want the yellow. I want. This is a yellow-orange that I'm going to use to go over the yellow section. So I used pink in the example, but I want to uh, recreate this so you know exactly how to follow this. But don't feel like you have to use the same colors if you don't want to. I know some kids like to um, follow exactly, and some kids like to just go off and do their own thing and um, are super creative. So. I like to encourage that, you know, um, as long as you understand the basic concepts and principles of the lesson, go for it. Art is about being creative and using your imagination and um, expressing yourself creatively to show your uniqueness, right? Um, nobody's art is the same, nobody's style is the same, so don't feel like Yours should look like anybody else's necessarily, okay? Um, all right, so <laughs> kind of got some pink, yellow, orange dots, but that's okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is the body. And actually, I use the same color, so let me get that back out. I just put the top on it. I am going to color in this part. And I'm just going to draw straight across here to kind of give me a little border. So I don't color over the line. I'm just taking my marker. The one thing I do like about these markers for this project is they have a broad tip. They also have a fine tip. Um, but the broad tip is really nice for just doing the clean lines, um, especially the bold black outline. Uh, this marker is really nice for it you use a sharpie or something that's a finer tip you might have to go over it a couple times and kind of widen it out but that's okay or you don't have to <laughs> as long as you have a black line separating each section okay so I'm just filling this part in I feel like this project would be a lot of fun with pastel, oil pastels. Um, so if anybody tries that, let me know. I might try it on my own just to see. Because, you know, you can teach the same project in different mediums um, to teach different skills to kids. Which is cool. As long as they haven't learned. I, I also like to do where you take, like, one project and you do it in multiple mediums, like as a four part project, you know, I think that's really fun. And it gives kids a chance to see which mediums they like best, you know. Some kids like to draw, some kids like to paint. 
So it's important to let them uh, experiment with different mediums to figure out which one they're most comfortable with and which one they feel most appropriately expresses their creativity. Um, so I have dots. Okay, so I'm going to do these red dots over my yellow-orange body. If you do this um, activity tonight or this weekend anytime, whenever you share it with your littles, um, I would love for you to share it and tag me um, on Facebook or Instagram. Um, on Facebook, it's Crystal Botiford Art. Obviously, you're here. <laughs> um, and on Instagram, it's just Crystal Botiford, first and last name, no spaces, no dashes, no dots, nothing. Um, I have a, a highlights on my Instagram profile where I like to share student artwork. Um, I don't post kids' faces or anything. Sometimes I get photos with faces, but I don't post those because it's not my job to put your kid on social media. <laughs> so uh, if, if I had kiddos, I would not want them on social media. So I try to respect privacy of my students and their families. Um, okay, so what do we got next? Let's do this bottom corner. This is the bottom right corner. So I did a light green background with dark green dots. So I'm gonna get my light green marker. And I am just gonna start filling this guy in. Another fun thing to do is um, if you want your child to experiment with different styles of art, you can take, uh, you could just do like a still life at home, you know, just set up like, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just set up some apples or something. And then uh, you can show your kids different types of art movements and then have them recreate the apples or whatever your still life is in different styles. So that's another fun project I like to do. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go in over my light green area and I'm going to do my dark green dots. There's also a photo of this reference sample I'm using that I created the um, I guess that was no that was this week. I created this earlier in the week. Um, there's a photo of this in the discussion section, so um, you don't have to use this as a reference photo. Um, but it's a bigger photo, uh, and you should be able to see it easily. So you're welcome to use that because um, obviously when I draw like this, it doesn't look as good. Um, okay, so now I'm going to move on to uh, this section of the body. And so I used the uh, yellow-orange for that. So I'm going to fill that part in. And do red lines for the top. You can do them thicker, thinner, whatever it is. <laughs> that one's a little wonky. Okay, it's okay. Kind of hard to draw straight from this angle. Um, and then let's go to uh, our feet. So I used pink. Again. 
sure this isn't a beautiful angle over of the camera. <laughs> It's harder to draw the closer it is to me. So yeah, like I was saying, I'm going to be moving to uh, New York State, uh, upstate New York, in a few weeks, uh, pretty much the week after the February Kids Craft Hour, I'll be moving to New York. Um, so my husband is an editor, and he works uh, audio video, and so he is helping me get my studio up to par for recording. So I'm very excited because it won't look like this anymore. It's going to look very nice. <laughs> uh, but just bear with me for this one and next month, and I promise <laughs> I'm about to step up my game. <laughs> Okay, so we got the pink feet. I'm going to do the blue, and then I'm going to work on my face last, okay? Um, you can color in any order you want, whatever is comfortable for you. I've just been going this direction, clockwise. So, I'm going to use the blue. Now, if you already know about pop art, I would love to hear from you what, who your favorite pop artist is or what's your favorite uh, piece of pop art. Do you have a favorite painting or what is it? Share it with me um, because I'm always looking for artists and they don't have to be famous artists. It could be maybe you have a friend that does pop art. I don't know. Um, but I'm always trying to teach my students about new artists, new and old, famous, not famous, uh, just so they can learn. You know, it's, art isn't about being this big, famous artist, you know, that every everyone knows. It's about creating and the joy that that brings you and uh, sharing your gift with people. And I think when they see that uh, you don't have to be famous to do this, um, it's not necessarily about being famous or anything like that. Especially in the world of YouTube. <laughs> it's like a whole career now, I guess. Okay, let's see. Well, this last little part, I'm just doing a triangle of this face. Done. So all we have left is our face and our black outlines, okay? So, let's see. I'm going to need, I'm going to put the, putting the top back on my markers so they don't dry out. Um, my black one. mixed up my tops. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I was doing. I put the green one on the, on the purple. Okay, so we need yellow, pink, and yellow, orange for the face if you're doing it like I did. So I'm going to color my eyes, so they're pink. Don't fill in the circle you drew. If it's helpful, draw, draw around it before you start filling in the pink. So then that will help you remember not to fill in that area, okay? Okay, 
we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to draw a circle so I remember not to color it in. And then I'm going to outline. wonky. <laughs> That's okay. Alright, so now I'm going to do the uh, yellow orange for my nose. It's just a triangle. Alright, and I'm going to do the yellow for the face. I'm going to show you one more time so you can see it before we color it all in. So we're going to fill in this yellow face, and then we're going to start doing our black outlines on everything, okay? That's the wrong side. All right. Make sure you don't color in the eyes, so go around the eyes first if you need to, to remind you not to color them in. Same thing over here so I don't accidentally co color them in. Okay, and then I'm just going to start filling in the face. So now we have colored in all the spaces that we're going to color in. We've done our patterns. We've got our sections marked off. So now we are going to take our black marker and we are going to trace every pencil line. Okay? So I'm going to show you one more time. What that looks like. I mixed these up too. <laughs> tonight or something. Oh, that's okay, so this is what our final cat is going to look like. So now that we've got all these colors filled in, now we're going to take our black marker and we are going to trace over every pencil line that we created, okay? Like I said, I like to use this really broad marker. That's because it's a lot easier to get that crisp line. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So, if you just lay it flat and put that edge against your paper, you're going to bring it down the center of your pencil line, and look how nice that looks. See, there's no going back and forth, no trying to get the same thickness on every line. You just drag it across your paper, and it looks really good. Okay? So, you can go in any order you want to uh, do these pencil line coverings with your black marker. Um, if you have the thinner marker, it is totally fine. Don't feel like your lines have to be as thick as mine. I goofed a little bit. That's okay. Goofed just a tad. Oh, uh, um, just make it as thick as you want, just as long as you get the contrast. The thicker line is def definitely going to give you a, a uh, bolder look to it, but just the black outline alone, no matter how thick it is, is going to create contrast. So don't feel like it has to be the same thickness as mine. Only uh, have it this thick because it's be the thickness of the marker tip, okay? So 
I've got the outline of my face done. I'm going to do my eyes. The circles in the eye, I don't do as thick just because they're a smaller area. And if it's too thick, it might actually fill in the circle. And we want to make sure we have white space for that. And um, the same for the nose, since it's a smaller piece, I just use the front tip of the marker. So I do a J. I'm going to do a backwards J for the mouth. Okay. Now I'm going to go this way, do the body. If you need to stop and pick up your marker, that's totally fine. Just to make sure you continue it on the same line. Okay, so that's how it's looking so far. So I'm just going to keep filling these in. I've got a few more lines left. We've got eight minutes left, so I think we can finish. <laughs> um, also, I, I do want to let you know this because I do move to New York. So March will be the first kids craft hour that um, I teach that I'm in New York. Um, so I will be in the Eastern time zone after moving. And so my kids craft hours will actually be moving to that time zone. So just be aware this one and the February one next month will be central time. But in March moving forward, they will be in Eastern time. And I'll be sure to put that, um, I'm going to update my Facebook information so it, it puts the correct time zone. And I, of course, always list it uh, when I share the events. Okay, let's see. We just got these two left. your Romero Brito cap. So remember to sign your name. You are an artist. So sign your name at the bottom. Um, I always like to just use a color that's in the painting. I'm just going to do black. Um, I don't like my signature to be uh, extremely noticeable. I want the focus to be the artwork. So when I sign my name, I try to do it close to the artwork so it's a little inconspicuous. I would put mine right here. So that's my little, tiny little signature there. Make sure you sign yours. Your mom wants to hang it on the fridge or your dad. And there you have it, a Romero Brito cap. That was fun, right? Not too difficult. Um, I think this is a good project for a lot of skill levels and ages because it does um, not only it doesn't only teach about pop art and Romero Brito, but it teaches kids about line work, about uh, pattern. It also teaches them uh, um, about color schemes from the standpoint of layering colors. So I think it's a great easy lesson, even if your kid isn't super into art or you're not the most creative. Um, it's so easy to do, and um, yeah, it's a great great learning experience. So if you join me tonight, be sure to take a picture of your artwork uh, whenever you complete it and um, post it and tag me because I love to see what you guys create. I love to see what you come up with. Um, kids always surprise me uh, <laughs> with their creations and 
I love it. Um, for next month's Kid Craft Hour, I will be teaching you how to make these cute little Valentine's cards. Um, they can just be artwork or you can actually use them as cards. You can write a message on the back, you can write a message on the front. We're going to be creating these with a, a black oil pastel and watercolor ink, or watercolor paint, sorry. So you want to have black paper, watercolor, white watercolor paper, a black oil pastel, and uh, whatever watercolor uh, paint you want to use, whatever colors you have. Um, this is a very easy project. Um, oh, and you'll need glue, sorry, because we're going to have to glue, uh, cut out and glue uh, the watercolor paper onto the black paper. So uh, I'll repeat the materials list one more time. Scissors, glue, pencil, eraser, black paper. You can use construction paper. This is just black drawing paper that I already had. Uh, white watercolor paper, uh, black oil pastel, and watercolor paints, okay? Um, this was originally gonna be a black glue project, but after I attempted that myself, I decided no parent wants to clean that up. Uh, it was a disaster. I don't know why our teachers use that uh, for this type of lesson. So we're gonna be safe and we're gonna go with oil pastel. If you do not have oil pastel, you can use black crayon um, I actually did, let's see, these two are black oil pastel, and these two are black crayon. So if you don't have black oil pastel, you can totally use black crayon. Um, I will put these beside each other so you can see the difference. Um, crayon, let's see, get them, there we go. Black crayon and uh, black oil pastel. So there's not much of a difference. What we're going to be doing is creating a, a barrier. So in the oil pastel case, it's a oil barrier. Um, and then this is a wax barrier for the crayon. And so when we create that barrier, we'll be able to color within those shapes with the watercolor without it bleeding into the other areas. Um, and then we'll be using those techniques and combining them with doodles and a pen. If you want to use pen or marker, you can totally do that um, to make Valentine cards. Whether you're in class remotely, uh, you know, through Zoom or virtual classes, or if you are going to in-person classes, um, these are great. You don't have to be in a school and on Valentine's Day to to uh, create these. Um, I think they're great for anyone that you just want to show that you care, give a little message. Um, happy Valentine's Day, Mom. Happy Valentine's Day, Grandmother, Grandfather, Dad, whoever it may be. Um, whoever. So I think it's going to be a fun project. It'll be similar to this one where we'll probably finish five-ish minutes before the full hour. But um, this is great because it gives me an time obviously to show you the next month's project and give you a little info about that. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me tonight. Again, this is our Romero Brito cat and next month uh, we'll be doing the kids craft hour before Valentine's Day so you will have at least a full week to send out your Valentine's if you do need to mail them. I wanted to make sure I did it early for you so you have plenty of time. Um, so again, thanks for joining me. I hope to see you next month. Um, and I hope you hang in there with me until March so I can bring you an even better Kids Craft Hour uh, once I get settled in my new studio. Um, post your images, tag me, uh, Crystal Botterford Art on Facebook or Crystal Botterford on Instagram. Um, all tutorials are posted on my YouTube channel and my blog for you to watch over and over again and do these awesome projects at your own pace. So I will see you next month and take care. Thank you.